Hello, witchy people, and welcome. I'm Alice Knight, and today I'm wishing you all a truly blessed Madden. Madden is a part of the Pagan Wheel of the Year and is the festival celebrating the autumnal equinox, otherwise known as the first official day of autumn. It marks the point in the year when day and night are of equal length. Balance is highlighted here, reminding us that everything is temporary, that no season lasts forever, and that neither dark nor light ever overpowers the other for long. It's a time to soak in the last of the summer sun and welcome the cooler, crisp autumn weather before the days become shorter as winter approaches. Today, I will share with you what I did to celebrate this season. The exact date of Mavin varies from year to year depending on when the autumn equinox falls but is usually between September 21st and the 24th. This year, it was on Saturday the 23rd. In the morning, I spent some time outside taking a nature walk, looking for the beautiful and long-awaited signs of autumn. Where I live in Texas, it's still warm, but the sweltering heat of the summer has finally broken. Now it's in the 90s Fahrenheit, so still hot, but it's certainly better than this summer when we had over 45 consecutive days of 100 degree plus temperatures. Although autumn has officially begun, it really doesn't look or feel like fall weather here yet. On my way home from my walk, I saw a bunch of Texas sage bushes blooming, which is said to be an indication that rain is on its way. Hopefully soon, we will be able to start to notice the crisp, sweet smell of the fall air and see the leaves starting to fade and change their colors. The autumn equinox, much like the spring equinox of Stara, is a great time to clean and clear out around your home and magical space to help balance out the energies for the new season and get ready for winter. This gets rid of any unwanted stale energy in the air and helps to start fresh and new. Over the two weeks leading up to Madden, I worked on cleaning up and organizing my bedroom, which is where I have my altar and store my witchcraft supplies. I worked on physically cleaning my altar cabinet as well as energetically cleansing it. I removed all the items from inside the cabinet and wiped them down with a cloth to get rid of any dust that might have accumulated. Once I had all the items moved out, I used a protection spray I had made to spritz all over the inside and outside of my altar cabinet. This is a simple room spray using distilled water, witch hazel, alcohol, and a few drops of cinnamon essential oil. Cinnamon is such a great spice for this time of year because it's warming, grounding, calming, and protecting, as well as smelling incredible. I'll leave a simple recipe to make your own room spray down below in the description if you're interested. Once my altar was clean and cleansed, I started placing all my items back inside the cabinet. This was a good chance to look over everything and decide what I wanted to keep and what I no longer needed that could be donated. Next, I started placing all my Madden items back on top of my altar. I had bought this pretty fall leaves fabric to sew into a custom altar cloth, but I didn't end up getting to make it in time, so I just used the fabric as is for now and will sew it into a proper altar cloth later. Because this Sabbath is all about balance, I really tried to have my altar feel balanced as well. I included the usual items like my working candle, my deity candles and representations, a wooden pentacle I made, my bell I often use for cleansing, candle snuffer and lighter. I like to have a special candle to light to help celebrate each Sabbath, so a few days before Madden, I made a special rolled beeswax candle using the fall colors of brown, red, and orange and placed it in the center of my altar on top of my pentacle. I also included some decorative items like a small vase of faux fall flowers as well as a faux fall leaf and yellow flower. I used to have a bunch of silk fall leaves I used to decorate, but I wasn't able to find them this year. I also added a light pink rose candle holder and plenty of crystals. I felt drawn to include a pink Himalayan salt sphere as well as clear quartz, citrine, amethyst, tiger's eye, and rhodonite. I had a couple acorns I had found outside and decided to add those to bring a touch of nature and the autumn energies indoors. Mabin is a time of gratitude, so I also included this small card I was given that I put on a stand. Mabin is the second harvest Sabbath of the year, and there is an abundance of crops that are traditionally harvested during this time, such as gourds, pumpkins, grapes, and apples. It's a chance to give thanks for the abundance of Mother Earth, both literally and spiritually. Mabin is sometimes called the Pagan or Witch's Thanksgiving, and is a good time to have a celebratory feast. 
This year, I chose to make a special meal to honor this abundant season. I love to bake, so I started by gathering some ingredients to make a special dessert. The first ingredient was apples, which are often associated with Mavin. Apples are a feminine fruit with many uses in magic. A few of these include peace, love, luck, health, longevity, prosperity, and fertility. Apples are known to be very magical because when you cut an apple in half, you can see the pentacle inside. Today, my apples are being chopped up to be used in an apple dump cake I'm making from scratch. Other ingredients in this recipe include cinnamon that I'm using for prosperity, abundance, and love, nutmeg for love, luck, and prosperity, and vanilla extract for healing and happiness. This cake is sweet and delicious, and I will also include the recipe down below in the description box. The rest of our Mabin feast included baked chicken, avocado salsa, rice, and scalloped potatoes. It was also requested I make a hot apple cider to drink, so I used an easy crock pot recipe. It acted as a bit of a simmer pot and made the house smell lovely. I will also have this recipe below in the description box as well. I feel that whatever you create, cooking is a great way to put your energy and soul into the foods you and your family eat. As you are preparing the food, you can add your energy in for whatever intention you would like to focus on. I do this with most of my cooking, but find it most effective when cooking and baking from scratch because you can choose specific ingredients that are associated with your intention and add your energy as you incorporate each of them. Our meal tasted great and we really enjoyed it. Mabin is also a time to reflect on the previous year when we can celebrate our successes and assess which dreams didn't come to fruition. This harvest festival is a time to express gratitude, complete projects, and honor this moment of balance. In the evening, I lit my Mavin candle and spent some time meditating and speaking with my deities. This year, I decided to perform a gratitude and abundance ritual I created to show my thanks for all the things I have been blessed with and bring forth more abundance and prosperity in the coming year. This was a two-part ritual, and I started by performing a gratitude spell. The first step was to think of all the things I'm grateful for and write out a list that included bigger and smaller things, such as my family, friends, pets, my home, modern medicine, technology, air conditioning, and more. I folded the paper in half toward me three times and then placed it in the center of a small plate I often use for spell work. I chose a chime candle in a color that represents gratitude, which to me was gold, and placed it in a candle holder on top of the folded paper on the plate. I chose a few herbs that correspond to gratitude to me to use in my spell. I held each herb individually in my hands and added my energy with my intention before sprinkling them on the plate around the candle in a circle, going in a clockwise direction to bring in the energy I wanted. Next, I used some crystal chips and did the same thing as with the herbs. I used three or four chips of each kind of crystal and added them around the plate spaced evenly on top of the herbs. I chose amethyst and citrine as well as clear quartz. When using crystals like this for spells, I always like to include clear quartz because it's great at amplifying the properties of all the other ingredients, which helps give the spell an overall boost. After that, I again took a moment to concentrate on my intention of gratitude and add more energy into the spell. I then lit the candle as I said, I'm grateful for everything the universe has provided me and I embrace the bountiful blessings of life. As the gratitude candle continued to burn, I moved on to the abundance portion of the ritual. Abundance is more than wealth. It's a rich and full life. It means you have more than you need and you share it. An abundance spell should bring money, luck, gratitude, and happiness. Part of the spell can be realizing what you already have and showing gratitude for it, which is what I did in the first half. I had decided to make an abundance spell jar using a tube type jar I had. I chose eight different herbs I wanted to add because the number eight corresponds to abundance. Similarly to how I did the gratitude portion, I held each herb individually in my hands as I added my energy and intention of abundance and prosperity, then added them each to the jar. I chose four types of crystal chips to use, which included green avengerine, peridot, citrine, and of course, clear quartz. I added my energy to several of each of these before placing them in the jar as well. Now that the jar was full, I added the cork in the top to close it. 
To help seal the jar closed, I added two colors of sealing wax that represent abundance and prosperity to me. The first color was green, and I melted it in a spoon over a candle, then poured it onto the top of the jar, letting it drip over the edges and down the sides to seal it closed. Then I did the same for the gold wax. As I added each of the sealing waxes, I said my incantation. I have unlimited access to the abundance of the universe and I'm open to receiving prosperity and abundance in all areas of my life. I then sat by my altar, meditating on my intentions as I continued to let the gold gratitude candle burn all the way down to complete the ritual. I will continue to occasionally add my energy into the abundance spell jar over time to keep it going and ensure that it works. Overall, Mabin is a time of thanksgiving, balance, and a deep connection to nature. It's a celebration of the changing seasons and a reminder of the cyclical nature of life and the Earth's rhythms. It reminds us to appreciate the simple joys of life and the natural world around us. There are plenty of ways you can embrace the spirit of the autumnal equinox, and these I shared are just a few. Celebrating Mabin or any other holiday doesn't need to be extravagant or expensive. I don't always do a lot to celebrate the Sabbaths, especially because of the pain and fatigue that come along with my chronic illnesses, but I am happy when I am able to do something. Mabin was a long but enjoyable day, and at the end, I was quite tired and ready to just relax. I'd love to hear how you celebrated Mabin this year. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you will subscribe and like the video. See you later. Bye.